Okay, the simulation is over and uh, I want to show you first thing that I always check and that is um, convergence and uh, over here you can see how the simulation completed it. It went through uh, six iterations in my case and uh, the, the number of tetrahedrals or meshings um, I started from uh, 11,000 and ends at 43,000 to satisfy our needs and uh, you can see that the energy error is lower than 1% and you can see that the delta energy is also lower than 1% so everything is good. Now um, you can also plot this uh, results for example I can say um, delta energy over the, the time so you can see it's always lower than 1% and, um, and also this one so uh, over here you can see that the very first time in past four that we reached below 1% of energy error we didn't stop there we went one more time and one more time two more passes after that to make sure that we get the result and that's I want to emphasize on that because that's the number that I put I put two passes after the convergence I want to make sure that the first pass is fine the second pass is also fine it's not going to go up and we get an energy error because sometimes depending on the uh, solution that it finds it might be a wrong solution and you get an error there so this is pretty good it's very healthy path I'm happy with the result here I'm gonna go to uh, I did uh, forgot to add something and that is uh, you also want to add the uh, parameters uh, like for example the inductance so you can go and say I'm gonna see the inductance of uh, for example the IN the coil and uh, you may add number of turns for your coil so you don't need to define like many number of turns you just define here you say I, I have like hundred turns for this coil and that's a just simple multiplication that you will see um, in the result so I'm gonna add this also I want to add something else to this and I want to go with um, um, the, the line um, so I'm gonna draw a line and be able to plot the, the field for you uh, uh, on along this line so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with the line drawing tool if I can find it um, should be somewhere here um, okay um, okay it's 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 shorten here so you can just use it here draw a line and uh, so it's it warns you that uh, once you use add a line into your model you're gonna lose the the, the resolution that you have that's fine um, so I'm gonna go and use the the, uh, the snap feature of the modeler and snap in the center bottom of the core and then go all the way top to to the top of that and I stop there so I am gonna say done so this is gonna be our line um, I don't know if you guys can see it but um, you can see that purple line that's the line and you can call it um, X um, or you can say axis line or um, whatever you like to call it. Um, okay. Now, uh, once you do uh, run the simulation one more time, I can uh, analyze it again. Uh, just to, it's it's pretty fast because uh, I already have the solution. So once we run the simulation, we can actually see the results. So while the simulation is going, I'm going to prepare for you the results. You go right-click on the report and you go to the create field report and select the rectangular plot. Once you do that, uh, you have the option to find in your geometry. By the way, the simulation is over. Uh, you can find in the uh, geometry the axis line, and you can say how many points you want to go through, and then you can say magnet uh, magnitude of B along the axis line. And I want to plot it. So you say new plot, 
there we go and it does the plot for you so at 0 which is minus 10 um, this is what the magnitude of the B is and then it passes all the way to uh, it's 20. Uh, I would like actually to uh, maybe extend the the line because uh, well the magnitude of B is pretty small inside the iron because iron is a um, ferrite material and so uh, the magnitude of B is pretty small because of a high uh, perme permeability of the iron but once you get out of the iron you're gonna see much higher level of B so to be able to see that um, I'm gonna go back to my um, model and this time on the axis line I want to extend I want to extend the axis from 0 all the way to 30 so I can see 10 millimeters above the core and I should expect to see a very high um, B because the permeability is very low and H is the same therefore you get a higher B value so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and um, uh, by the way uh, back to this uh, B you can see that where the core is you have maximum B which is what expected the core is about 10 and you got maximum B around 10 uh, about 45 millitesla and after that you have a drop of the B um, uh, because the uh, the vectors are all going to go around the core um, sorry it's going to be around the coil and therefore at the very center where the core where the coil is and they're going to be all in parallel so you get the maximum um, uh, magnitude of B and once you go higher they are starting to go right and left and uh, and therefore you get less and less magnitude among C axis so now uh, let me show you um, what happens if I go uh, pass by that so again I'm gonna go to the design and this time I'm gonna go and um, create the line so this is the black is a line so it starts from minus 10 and instead of ending at plus 10 which is exactly where the uh, co the core will end I'm gonna say 20 and uh, you can see the extension of that line now and uh, now um, if I do um, uh, the plot you can see it immediately applied to the plot and you can see that um, you get um, wait uh, I was supposed to see um, a sorry you will see a decrease of B uh, but increase of H magnitude of H that's my mistake um, the H is pretty low inside the high permeability material which is iron and pretty um, uh, big inside uh, uh, inside the air so um, so in the air you should have a high uh, p value of H and low value of I mean almost same value of B but uh, but lower because you get higher distance and there is uh, higher reluctance so they will you will see a, a drop there um, a little bit but then um, it's almost the same at the at the point where you leave um, the iron and goes to the air but the edge will uh, will show a huge uh, change hopefully so let's take a look at that actually so if you go to rectangular plot and we select axis line this time I'm interested to see the H magnitude of H and uh, I'm gonna plot it in a new page and as you can see um, the H value is pretty low for um, for inside the iron but once it passes the iron and goes to the air because of the very low permeability of the air you're gonna have a jump of H to be able to create the same amount of magnetic field density of B so this basically proved that our simulation is uh, uh, following our expectation now I'm gonna right click on setup and one more time I wanna go to the solution and this time I wanna go to the matrix and select RL and that post process is the is where you put the t the number of turns more than one. So if you do that, when you select the post process, you will you will see all these values become times by uh, number of turns a square. So it's not a huge magic. So you, I, I don't really care to put it. But anyway, so R and L, you can see that the inductance unit and this only give you the inductance, not the capacitance, um, is uh, is calculated at 10 kilohertz for you. 
Of course, if you have a sweep of frequency, you can have more frequencies and more inductance in different frequencies. But um, if the values are kind of weird, you can go with nano Henry or micro ohm. So you can see that the the, the copper has a very little uh, ohmage and um, in AC AC ohmage and uh, you know um, respectively acceptable 50 nano Henry of um, I believe inductance now if you I want to just let you know another thing that if you go to the um, real and imaginary part um, this uh, imaginary part um, has both inductance and capacitance so just want to make sure that you guys know that it, it calculates the reactance of ca uh, capacitance and inductive and inductance at the same time so just be aware of that um, so even though it's like a uh, at the eddy current simulation, it does still give you um, some insight of the capacitance uh, that may be created by this um, geometry. Now, I'm going to close this, and uh, I did show you um, what I was trying to show you. The last thing I'm going to show you is just the field. It's it's pretty easy to, to plot it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this Y and um, Z plane, and then I go to the plane and say YZ plan and then I go to the fields and then say I want to see the B uh, maybe the vector right and then I say all objects and say OK so that will give you the B as you can see it's not a very perfect um, uh, figure so what you can do is you can double click here on the legend and go to the scale make it logarithmic go to the arrow and make sure that it's not mapping the size and, and decrease the size of the arrow so you can just follow the size of the uh, field by the color of the arrow so that's that's pretty good and um, you know you can make the arrow a little bit like bigger and smaller depending on how you want to do it and press apply close and once you go and select the B one more time it will uh, make the other um, stuff translucent so you can see a better view and you can use this um, views as well to get a better understanding of the field and um, yeah so this is your B and as you can see this starts um, circling around on both sides and you are going to expect a maximum B around here which is shown in the picture as well in the plot okay that concludes our um, uh, simple um, interpretation of the results um, one other thing that we can do is um, to see what is the average uh, amount of uh, B is going to be uh, inside the um, inside the core I'm going to use calculator to do that so for that uh, stay tuned I'm gonna make another video and uh, use that video to uh, explain to you how that will take because it's going to take more time to create, uh, to create and also to explain to you. Okay, have a great uh, simulations. And if you have any questions, you can always send me an email at the emails provided here. Uh, but as I said, for any of YouTube training as well as consultants and designs, I do charge an hourly rate. So have a great um, simulations, comments, and subscribes. And uh, that's it.